So. <laughs> how many of you saw me last time? Well, as you know, uh, how many here that's new, uh, how many people just don't like snakes? The only good snake's a dead snake. Honey, go get the hoe. Or the shovel. The hoe did used to be a garden tool. I specialize in people like you. People with insidious and inhibiting aphidiophobia. Insidious and inhibiting aphidiophobia. The fear of snakes. I could be accused of aphidiophilia. I feel you, Avidia. <laughs> From Honduras, like most of the kids on our border, <laughs> this is actually called the tangerine Honduran milk snake because the yellow bands are orange. Isn't it gorgeous? I gotta tell you. This is one hell of a conversation starter at the dog park. <laughs> you know why they call him a milk snake? Any guesses? They like milk. Yeah, why do they call a king snake? What does a king snake eat? Little bitty kings. I don't know if you play chess, but the game is over when your opponent swallows your king. No, milk snakes don't drink milk. Farmers found him hanging out in the dairy barns, figured they were there to drink milk. He could imagine four of these attached to a cow like a milking machine. <laughs> Needle sharp teeth, imagine the cow standing still for that. You know what the longest snake in the world is? Anaconda's a good guess we're wrong. I used to own one, his name was Andy. We called his cage the Andy Condo. But Andy had a behavioral problem. Andy wanted to bite you. And if Andy was not allowed to bite you, Andy got frustrated. When Andy got frustrated, Andy pooped. <laughs> and Andy could poop nine feet. <laughs> so Andy got a new home. Anybody, no, the longest snake was a reticulated python. You know how long he was? Anybody know? 33 feet. Think telephone pole. But it's been a really long time since anybody's even seen a 30-foot snake. And yet, tonight, you're actually meeting someone who owns a 30-foot snake. Yeah, I almost hated to spring that on you. Like in the front row, huh? I love it when people heckle a man who showed up with snakes. What do you call a snake with legs? Lawyer. A politician. <laughs> Especially in Texas. Actually, another good answer would be lizard. This is, in fact, a lizard. Yay! He is not an iguana. No, he's not a Gila monster. He is not a Komodo dragon. And he is certainly not some gecko who's constantly going on about saving you money on insurance. No, he's from Argentina. He's a black and white tegu. And his name is Capo. Now that is a lizard. Now he does not have the mumps, those big squishy cheeks. Squishy, squishy. Those are where he stores fat. And he stores a lot of it during our winter time because that's summertime in Argentina. During the summertime, he mostly sleeps under my bed. Probably one of the reasons I'm single. He goes at two speeds, slow and stop. Actually has a free run in my house. When he's hungry, he marches out into my kitchen and stares at my refrigerator. That's where he likes to be scratched. Right there, yeah. That's the good stuff. Yeah, you know, he's actually a very colorful character. Well, dear. 
not only does he have a colorful diet, sometimes that has interesting side effects. He actually has a uh, harness and a leash. He hasn't been to the dog park yet, though. <laughs> when it cools off a little bit, he's going. You should see the looks on the dog's faces. <laughs> it's priceless. All right, let's hear it for Capone. Now, I think I told you guys, almost everything that people know about snakes is wrong. I mean, all of the usual, like for instance, everybody says, look at the shape of the head. That's wrong. The most venomous snake we have is a little bitty narrow head. The, a lot of snakes with wide triangular heads are harmless. Most of the snakes in the water are water snakes. Wide triangular head, but they're harmless. So all of the usual stuff. My favorite, how many of you have ever seen a snake hole? Yeah, well, there's no such thing as a snake hole. Think about it. Everything that digs a hole, what does it use? Yeah, how many of those do snakes have? Less than one. If a snake is in a hole, the snake stole the hole. Usually to escape from the human who saw him go in, ergo the myth of snake holes. But this particular story has to do with a couple of guys that saw a big hole in the woods. Really big hole, so they didn't think it was a snake hole. But they looked in the bottom, they couldn't see the bottom. They're like, hello. No echo. They started throwing stuff in, twigs and rocks. Didn't hear anything. One of them gets a rock the size of a football and he heaves it in there and they listen and they listen, nothing. The other one said, you know, back in the woods, we passed a big old railroad tie. You know, if we throw that sucker in this hole, we're gonna hear it hit bottom. So they go over in the woods. They got on either end of this big railroad tie and they trudge over to the hole and with a heave and a hoe, they throw it in the hole. And while they're waiting for it to hit bottom, a goat comes running out of the woods. They've never seen a goat run this fast. He's running like crazy. He jumps in the air. He dives in the hole and he disappears. They're like, what? <laughs> Before they can figure out what's going on, a farmer comes walking out of the woods. You boys ain't seen my goat, have you? <laughs> yeah, we saw a goat. He was running like crazy. He jumped in the air. He dived in this hole and he disappeared. Nah, that wasn't my goat. My goat was chained to a railroad tie. So, Rubbermaid and the wheel. The snake reminds me of a story, a story about a little girl, cute little girl with pigtails, walks into a pet store, looks up at the pet store guy, and she says, Mitter, do you have any little wabbits? And he thinks she's cute, so he kneels down and he talks like her. He says, well, you want to want a white wabbit? You want a little wild wabbit? You want that black and white one? She said, whatever. I really don't think my python gives a quap. <laughs> Anybody ever been to Myanmar? What? What? Anybody know where Myanmar is? <laughs> yes, it used to be called Burma, land of shaving cream. You have to be old to get that joke. <laughs> From Burma, I give you the Burmese python. But even if you went to the jungles of Burma, you would never find this snake. Do you know why? why? Because she's right here. <laughs> no, there's another reason. You would never even find one that looks like her because she never would have grown to be this big. Long ago, something would have eaten her because she would have stuck out like a sore thumb. Because this is a genetic mistake. This is called amelanistic. This is lousy camouflage. That's right, where are you gonna hide in the jungle when you look like this? Banana plant. You ever seen a 12 foot banana? <laughs> now where did our stairs go? Can we get our stairs back? Cause I think I'm gonna get a couple of, of volunteers.
Well done. It's a three-step program. <laughs> so, I need some volunteers. All right, there's two hands there, and two hands there, and I can barely see two more there, and yeah, okay, metal guy, come on. Side by side, shoulder to shoulder, make a line along here, facing that way. Metal guy in the middle, please. Metal guy. Perfect. Okay. Yeah, let's see. Let's get off the, uh, perfect. Now, everybody hold your hands out like. <laughs> okay, you on the other end, what's your name? Kenna. Kenna? Okay, Kenna, you're going to be in charge of the very important tail section. She's solid muscle. Stretch her out. Pull her up. Give my hand, folks, they're doing it. <laughs> now, normally, the most nervous face is down here with me at the eating end. However, Kenna, if that end begins to gurgle, please do not point it toward anyone. Uh-huh. I was once at a five-year-old's birthday party when this very snake got me from this shoulder to that foot, and that was the highlight of the show. They got to see the snake man get pooped on. When you're five, it just doesn't get any better than that. And you see, Kenna, the reason it's such a big deal, have you ever looked at a bird's feet? You guys ever looked at a bird's feet? It's not skin, it's scales, right? Snakes and birds are closely related. So when this snake poops, it's about like a 60-pound bird. We're talking ostrich poop. Yeah, snake poop is just bird poop that didn't fall very far. Everybody give my a hand. They were all very brave. Thank you. Let's see here. I'll come around this way. Her name is Evie. Yeah, something seemed appropriate about a large female serpent named Eve. You know, I really, I've gotten hundreds and hundreds of people over this fear. It's like any other fear that you're taught instead of born with. If you stare it down in a controlled environment, it goes away. My personal fear, and I had this since I was a little kid because I disturbed a wasp nest with my back climbing under a toy on the playground, you know what I mean? And I got stung like eight times down my back and I was very phobic about wasps. And it occurred to me after I met a guy who was into organic gardening who told me that they're actually beneficial insects that what kind of hypocrite am I if I want everybody else to get over this fear of snakes that's unnecessary? You know, you're 300% more likely to die of insect bite in the state of Texas than you are snake bite. Four times more people die of lightning strike here, especially at golf tournaments. So actually, I literally one year I said, okay, I'll make peace with the wasps. And it was a really rough year for it because there were three paper wasp nests on my front porch. And every morning I said hello to them. Every night I did too. One of them even landed on my shoulder. I just said, hi. None of them ever messed with me. I never turned into a ninja trying to swat them. <laughs> and by the end of the season, I was completely over it. So it's any, any fear like that, if you stare it down in a controlled environment, it goes away. Hundreds of people tell me that yesterday they would have killed that snake if they see it. Tomorrow they won't. So I want to do a little song about that. May I? <laughs> On a long and lonesome highway East of Omaha I see something long and skinny Stretching out across the road And your rider says run over it And you just want to explode Know that snake's got value He's been eating mice and rats It's the life that he was born to And there's nothing wrong with that So your rider is an idiot And in need of a good slap <clears throat> Here I am On the road again there he is, just trying to escape. There I go, slowing it down again. And there he goes, 
break for Snake. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are wonderful. Thank you.